When we think about heritage and tradition, we find that these two things work hand in hand. Because because it is heritage, this is how we know who we are or where we're from. And through the tradition, whether the tradition is through verbal or maybe through what we've seen, we also know how we are. So we see that these two things are very important. Whether our older generation is telling us about our heritage or they're telling us verbally about our traditions, we know that it's important for us to be able to spread that to the next generation. Because if we didn't spread that to the next generation, eventually no one would remember so when any type of tyrants come or any type of tyrant come, the first thing in which they do is they start to tear down monuments. They start to destroy books. They start to have people forget about who they are or whatever they come from. This is the first thing in which they do. Because eventually if we control the narrative and no longer allow these people to know their traditions and their heritage, then we can start telling them the way how they should see things or how they should verbalize things or how they should do things. This is what happened. You see that in a lot of places. The first thing they do is strip you from your heritage. This is how you start to do dominance. But we find that the Saudi people, the Saudi regime is so backwards because this heritage is also their heritage. So how in the world are you going to take away your own heritage? It just don't make sense to me. It's kind of like mind boggling if you ask me. You say, you know what? I understand this is my heritage. I'm just going to destroy it. <laughs> so maybe my next generation, they don't know. You know what? Forget our heritage. It's just open liquor stores and have casinos and stuff like that. This is not important. This What's important right now is what we're doing now. Forget our heritage. So we look at how they see things and the backwardness of these so-called scholars of maybe 100 years, and we start to realize that even amongst these scholars that a long time ago, they saw General Tupaki and they saw all these different shrines and no one said anything about it. I'm talking about real scholars that actually wrote real books from amongst their scholars. Like, real, like, good books. Not these other guys that... This sentence was his name even to me that during his time, the people, the scholars of his time, they considered him as one of them like a disbeliever and they wanted to kill him. But somewhere down the line, a hundred years later now, he's one of the biggest scholars amongst the scholars. How is this? This is just kind of weird. I just don't understand. Huh. It's just really interesting. And then I look at how they talking about they should level the graves. But then when I look at the picture of Ibn Tamiya's grave, he has a structure over it. <laughs> I said, man, this is a lot of contradiction we have in here. Like, how? How is this? Huh. It's like the person who speaks, but yet is silent. <laughs> There's so much contradiction. So much so that their scholars even said that all of these people are wrong in their interpretation of whatever they think it is because this is not correct. So how can scholars of just a hundred years come back to scholars of over a thousand years when it comes down to these rulings? just don't make sense. Let's just forget about our heritage and just let everything go. It's not important, you know? Uh -uh. It's not important for us. You know, let's not build. Let's not build over graves. Wait a minute. Yeah. I remember going for Umrah and as I'm going from Umrah, I passed this place and Rasulullah, Rasulullah, Rasulullah was buried there and it was a structure over it. Huh. Very interesting. I found that very interesting that we only have a particular chain of thought, like only certain things. Wait a minute, hold on, oh, wait a minute, I know. It is a problem when a Shia, they build things over graves. But when we do it, it's okay. Why? Because this is what we say. It's okay when we do it, but if they do it, then oh, oh it's, it's, it's a problem. Ain't that something, right? It's a problem when we do it, because that's what it all boils down to. If the Shia do it, then it's a problem. 
But if I do it, it is okay. It's not, don't listen to what I said. Just follow what I tell you. No, don't know. What I do is what I do. What I tell you, you should do this. So I tell you that we should not have any type of structure over Baki, but I'm going to build a shrine over here for maybe Abu Hanifa or maybe Shafi or maybe all the other guys. But it's okay. It's okay. But you, Shia, no, 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 no. You cannot do it because there's something wrong with that. It don't make sense. It just don't make sense to me. I don't know. I'm just being boggled here if you don't mind me having this conversation with you. It's just, you know, as I sit and I think and I'm like, huh, why, why would we think this way? How can we allow them to take away our heritage? See, because at the end of the day, because the place in which is, how can I say, that symbolizes is Akhla Bait. Because it symbolizes Akhla Bait, we must take it away. You know why? Because Akhla Bait is actually a threat if you really think about it. Why? Because we don't just follow, how can I say, our rulers because some person made some hot beef say you must follow your rulers even though they may be corrupt. <laughs> no, we follow Akhla Bait. How we follow Akhla Bait? Because Rasulullah said he's going to leave us two weighty things, the Quran and what? My household. So when we follow these people, we know that these people are my soul and that these people is going to guide us right. They're going to keep us on that path, that straight path. But these other people, you know what I mean? One day I may feel this way, the next day I may feel that way. I don't know. Maybe I said do this and maybe I said that. Oh, wait a minute, King, you going to give me some money? Oh, I changed my fatwa because of this. He gave me some falus, so now my fatwa has changed. <laughs> So this is how they think about things. So we look at this, we're like, hey. And then I sit even more boggled. And I say to myself, huh, are we as Shia that dangerous? Or is it that because our doctrines is so pure that if someone hear what we have to say, or they do these type of things, then people will start to say, wait a minute, let me see what's in their books. And wait a minute, what you're saying is that correct? These Shia people are correct, and that Jonathan Tupaki should be built. And why did you do it in the first place? This is the problem why they don't want to acknowledge or try to acknowledge. Maybe somebody can answer this question for me. Because if you don't know your past, you will not know your future. If your past you will just continue to repeat things over and over and over and over again. But since that our heritage of Akhla Bait, we know our heritage. Whether we seen our heritage or we heard our heritage through our ears, we know that we must fight to make sure that this heritage is not only for this generation, but the generations to come. So we will not allow somebody to just say, oh, we're just going to tear this down. And Make these regular places because at the end of the day, we see the people that did like. Oh, my name. Oh, my name is there. You see how the love for Akla Bay for Oh, my name was said. If you come back and and safe and sound and Imam Hussein is hurt, I do not want to see you. We have to have this type of drive that we must go forth and fight for our right for Akla Bay. Just saying. Uh, let me go now. I think I might have just said too much or too long. Please, if anybody has these ideas about this bottom situation I'm trying to figure out, please send me a letter or email me because I am confused about how they think. Sound like everybody. Uh, <laughs>